everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Trina Bruneau with Gulfport School District and I am the ELA Curriculum Specialist. It's such a pleasure um, to be at home with you as you explore your distance learning. Today we are going to continue to work with our word learning strategies to help us understand the meaning of words in the text that we read. And then we're going to apply these strategies to help us better understand today's informational text. Remember last time you and I worked with our word of the day, we, we started a vocabulary log and with our vocabulary log, we created a Frayer model. So I wanted to remind you of this Frayer model. Remember it's a graphic organizer that we divide into four parts. In the very middle of our Frayer model, we add in our focus word that we're working on. So I hope that you've been able to um, find a notebook that you can use to start your vocabulary log and to add your Frayer models in. Um, if not, now's a good time if you have a, a notebook that you can use or even notebook paper that you can keep in um, a folder and then you can build your collection of new words as you and I work together and as you complete Frayer models on your own with text that you're reading at home. Let's say the word three times together. Let me say it again for you. The word is challenge. Now you say it with me. Ready? Go. Challenge. 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 Good job. Write the word in your vocabulary log and say the letters aloud as you write. Now remember for our Frayer model, we're gonna write our term in the middle of our graphic organizer in the circle there that connects the four sections. You should have written the word challenge in the middle of your graphic organizer and it should look like mine. The next thing we need to do for our word work is to write the definition of the word in our vocabulary log. But remember for our Frayer model, we want to put this definition in our own words. So here's a dictionary definition or the denotation of the word challenge is it's a stimulating task. And with this definition, the word challenge is a noun. That's its part of speech. So in your Frayer model, in the upper left-hand corner, we need to come up with a definition for the word challenge in our own words. So think of something that you have done before that is challenging or something that was a challenge for you to complete. Maybe it's a challenge to do your chores every day that you should complete. Maybe there was a puzzle that you've been working on that was a challenge. So it was a little bit difficult, but you could do it. It just took a lot of hard work. Here's a definition I've come up with for challenge. It's a task or job that takes hard work and determination. So since it takes hard work and it may be something that's new for me, I'm going to have to really work on it. So it takes determination. You're welcome to copy my definition if you'd like or write one of your own in your own words. Here's some facts and characteristics. Let me give you some time to copy these into your vocabulary log. So in the upper right hand corner of your Frayer model, go ahead and write that it is a noun. The word challenge is a noun. But notice I wrote or verb because the word challenge can be used in a couple of ways, and we'll talk about those today. I've also broken the word down into its syllables, and I've written in the way that um, I can phonetically say this word so that I say it correctly when I use it. Let's take a look at how we can use the word challenge in sentences. The first sentence says, my mom asked me to clean up my room. That will be a blank because it is very messy. Does the word challenge fit in this blank? What do you think? Yeah, I think it fits too. So the sentence would read, my mom asked me to clean up my room. That would be a challenge because it is very messy. Well, how do you know that the word challenge goes in the blank? Remember, when we're working with words, we can do a couple of things. Tap into our prior knowledge, 
So let's think about that. When my room is really messy, is that a difficult task for me to do that takes a lot of hard work? Yeah, so I have prior experience with that. My prior knowledge can help me understand new words better. Let's take a look at the next sentence and see if the word challenge works in this blank. The book I am reading has many unfamiliar words, so it will be a blank to read without help. Hmm, challenge. Does that word work in that blank? Yeah, I agree with you. I think it works well too. So the book I am reading has many unfamiliar words, so it will be a challenge to read without help. So the word challenge works in the blank because my definition is something that requires hard work, determination. So that means I have to keep working on it and keep practicing. And if the words in the book that I'm reading are unfamiliar to me, then I know I'm gonna have to keep practicing in order to get good at reading those words. Good job. Is blank a challenge? Hmm, let's take a look. Look at this first picture. Is brushing your teeth a challenge? What do you think, yes or no? What about if we were rock climbing? Would that be challenging? How about completing a video game level? I guess that depends on you, right? How about watching a show? What do you think? Is that challenging if I'm watching a show? Let's see if what you thought was challenging matches what I thought. So for brushing a teeth, no, that's not challenging. I do that every day, several times a day. What about rock climbing? Is that challenging? Maybe not for you, but it's it would be challenging for me. How about completing a video game level? That would be challenging for me. I don't play much video games, so it would probably be a challenge. What if I were watching a show? Is that challenging? No, not for me. Wonder if we had the same answers. The word challenge has multiple meanings. So I can use the word challenge as a noun like in one of the example sentences where my mom asked me to clean the room and the challenge of cleaning my room is that it's very messy. So in that sentence, it's a noun. But challenge can also be a verb. So take a look at this second dictionary definition for the word challenge. Challenge means to question or dispute the accuracy of one's actions or thoughts. Oh gosh, let's explore this meaning of the word challenge a little bit more together. Grab your frayer model in your vocabulary log. We need to add another definition. So for my verb form of challenge, I've added the definition call to action. So if I'm challenging someone, I'm calling them to do something. I don't want to use the word argue necessarily, but argue may work sometimes. Let's take a look at the word challenge in sentences to give us better context for this word used as a verb. The first sentence says, I'd like to blank your thinking about a hippopotamus being a type of fish. Hmm, does the word challenge work in that sentence? It does. So challenge can be a verb in this sentence I'd like to challenge your thinking about a hippopotamus being a type of fish. So I'm calling you to action. I want to have a discussion with you about it. I want to dispute or maybe argue with you about whether or not a hippopotamus is a fish. Look at the next sentence. I blank your actions when snatching my toy that I had first. Does the word challenge used as a verb work in that sentence? I challenge your actions when snatching my toy that I had first. Yeah, the word challenge does work in this sentence because I am disputing with you or arguing with you. I'm calling you to action to have a conversation with me about the toy that I had first. Good job. 
If you are um, a four-year-old or a kindergartner, or maybe you're a first or second grader, there's a great story you can read to really practice the word challenge. It's called The Most Magnificent Thing, and you can find this story on YouTube. You'll be able to hear it read aloud to you. For my third through fifth grade friends, we're going to read an article together today titled Never Too Late by Samantha Gross, and then we're going to think about a few questions. So remember when I read, it's really important that I establish a purpose for reading. So I want to identify something that I can focus on specifically while I read to help me understand the text better. So here's some questions I want you to think about. The first one, what challenge does Art Ellison help his students overcome? The second question, why is illiteracy a challenge? And then lastly, what are ways to solve the challenge? So here we go. If you're reading this, then you're probably a student working on improving your proficiency as a reader, but you may already have more skills than some people much, much older than you. Some adults would have a hard time in your class because they never learned to read or because they never learned to read well. Art Ellison is the administrator of the New Hampshire State Bureau of Adult Education, which helps fund many programs for grown-ups who need to improve their skills. He says most people in these classes never finished high school. Some of them weren't successful students, while others dropped out of school so that they could go work and support their families. Not being able to read well as a grown-up can make life very difficult and cause complications at work and at home. There is also an emotional toll. They feel embarrassed, Mr. Ellison said. They think that as an adult, they should be able to do it. Let's pause here just for a second. So did you know that there are people who can't read and people who can't read well? As, as an adult, I know that sometimes the text that I read, I have to reread in order to understand it. So one of the strategies I can use as a good reader is to understand when I don't understand the text and go back and reread. Do you ever reread parts of stories that maybe you didn't understand? Good, you're using your strategies that you've learned as a good reader. Good job. Let's keep reading our passage. Often, adults with difficulty reading try to hide their problem from others. For example, Mr. Ellison explains, it's not uncommon for someone applying for a job to ask if he or she can take home an application. There, the applicant can ask a friend or even a daughter or son to help them fill out the form. Others try to disguise their inability to read the options on a menu by pointing to a photograph of a dish instead or by saying, I'll have what that person's having. Not being able to read at all is called illiteracy and it can be dangerous. A person who can't read the instructions on a bottle of medication could end up in the hospital after taking too many pills or after taking too few pills. Many people arrive at adult education programs in the hopes of helping their children do better in school than they did, Mr. Ellison says. Every parent wants to, or should want to, be able to help their kids with their homework, he said. Some parents can help explain schoolwork to their children, but parents who are illiterate can't easily help or even check if their children's homework is done. Children can start to learn reading skills by looking at the words while a parent reads them a book, but parents who don't know how to read might make up a story to go with the pictures in a book instead of actually reading the text. That can make it harder for their children to learn to read. Changes in the United States economy have made learning to read more urgent for some people, Mr. Ellison says. Many people who worked for decades in manufacturing never needed reading skills at work. For example, someone who worked attaching doors onto cars may not have needed to be literate to do the job. But at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, many American manufacturing jobs disappeared. It became cheaper for companies to manufacture things in other countries overseas. Some people who had worked for decades on an assembly line find themselves out of work. Often, the ones who couldn't read well had a hard time finding a new job, Mr. Ellison reports. The word changed around them. I'm sorry, the world changed around them, he says. For them, reading skills are 
important because of the difficulty of getting and then keeping a job. Men and women who, wanted, who want to enter job training programs to become welders and x-ray technicians are often given training manuals written at the 10th grade level, Mr. Ellison says. People with difficulty reading often have a hard time in these programs. They can also have difficulties learning to use computers because they can't always understand the instructions that appear on a screen. Some people graduated from high school but don't have good reading skills. That's partly because some schools have a policy of passing students on to the next grade, even if they haven't mastered all the material covered. That policy is called social promotion. Grown-ups who need help learning to read and other basic skills <clears throat> can seek out classes as, at adult education programs funded by the federal and state governments. A person who never graduated from high school can use one of these programs to get a high school equivalency certificate. With that kind of certificate, a person can apply to college. So learning to read can be a challenge. Let's review or take a look back at the questions I asked you to think about when we established our purpose for reading. So the first question, what challenge does Art Ellison help his students overcome? That's right, he helps them overcome the difficulty of not being able to read. That's also called being illiterate. So why is illiteracy a challenge? What do you remember from the text? Yeah, it's a challenge for a couple of reasons. It makes it difficult to apply for jobs, and then it makes it difficult to work in your job if you're illiterate or have um, or unable to read. It's also challenging because parents want to help their children with homework, and so being illiterate can make that hard. So what were some of the ways mentioned in the article that this challenge can be solved? That's right, people can take classes to help them learn to read. Good job. Let's go back to our word work with our prayer model. So from your life experience, also from what we've learned in the text, and also from the list that we read together, what are some examples of challenges that you can write or draw in your prayer model? So remember here, we can use illustrations as well. What about non-examples? So things that are not challenging. Write some words in the non-examples square at the bottom right of your Freyer model or draw some pictures to help you remember the opposite or antonym for challenge. Remember, antonym means opposite. Good job. Here's some ways you can use this word, uh, our word this week. The word is challenge. Um, Take a few minutes, read over these. I'm excited to hear what you do with our word that we learned today. I hope that this video wasn't a challenge for you, and I really wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time.